thanks to all the Aragon team for organizing this hackathon. We are very happy to be part of it uh, with a joint bounty with the Q project. I'm Jordi Aulet, uh, the product manager at Bogdoni, and I will first introduce uh, the Bogdoni project, and then I give the floor to Mark, our SDK developer, that will explain the Bogdoni SDK in more detail and how to use it. Okay, who we are? Uh, Bogdoni is a private, secure, and open source blockchain voting protocol that uses decentralized technologies to offer digital voting in order to improve and promote participatory governance. We were born as a governance solution for Web2 traditional world, let's say, and since 2021, we also targeted the Web3 world. Uh, our solution is end-to-end -end verifiable. Uh, anyone can verify or audit uh, an election, providing transparency, and is uh, scalable and gasless, meaning that the voters don't have to pay for casting their votes, only uh, sign the transaction for free. With all of these, we aim to provide a secure, transparent, and decentralized alternative to traditional voting systems, and on top of that, in a cheaper way. And what we do? Uh, at Bogdoni, we developed uh, the Bogdoni protocol, a specialized L1 blockchain based on Tendermint. Uh, it's a scalable and fast. Currently, we support about 8,000 transactions per second that can be translated more or less uh, than more 1 million votes per day which is enough for the 99.9% .9 of the organization needs. The man, main function of this protocol is to create, configure, and manage election and process votes. We support ZK SNARS anonymous voting, but is still not implemented in, in the SDK. We will do it in the near future. I hope that in about two months, it will be available in our SDK. And currently we are a proof of authority, but we are working to migrate to a federated proof of stake. And uh, you can check uh, our uh, Bogdoni blockchain in this link, the explorer.boat, uh, where you can find all the transactions, elections, votes, verify the votes, and check the current status of the blockchain, among other things. And our current products are the Bogdoni app for traditional organizations that you can uh, check at bogdoni.app, and the new API and SDK uh, that we will present today. Uh, with which you can build your own products using a TypeScript SDK. And also we have the developer portal uh, in developer.bogdoni.io where you can find the needed documentation, but also you can check the GitHub repository where all the repos are open. And I will really explain the bulk protocol. Our protocol is designed to be flexible and customizable, allowing the organizations, the projects, the developers uh, to create their own voting systems tailored to their specific needs. We support a wide range of elections from one person, one vote, ranked choice, weighted voting, multi-choice, quadratic voting, and more. And all of this just by changing the ballot variables make it very simple to use. Uh, I will not explain a lot more here, but you can check more in the link where you will find a detailed explanation on how it works and how to use it. Okay, uh, now I will explain briefly the election flow and Mark will dig down on this flow in the workshop. Uh, first, uh, you need to create an account in the, the Bogdoni blockchain. Uh, it will be a native account in the blockchain, in our blockchain. And you can use MetaMask as a signer or use directly the, the SDK. Once you have uh, this account, you can build a census to specify who is able to vote by using addresses and weights. And the census is stored as a Merkle tree. 
then uh, you can create a lecture and customize it uh, with the different parameters. Uh, all the difficulty is abstracted by the SDK, and these parameters allow us to define how the election will behave, like the start date and date, if the results are encrypted until uh, the end, or you can see that in real time, if the census is closed or is dynamic, uh, meaning that the more people can be added during the election period, um, and etc. Uh, once the election starts, the users can cast the votes in a gasless way. And when the election is finished, the results can be retrieved and are included in the blockchain state. Uh, this way, anyone can be able to verify them and provide uh, that the results, uh, proving that the results are correct since the blockchain is public. Uh, currently, we don't have uh, on-chain execution, but you can upload the results to Ethereum using an optimistic uh, mechanism, like via transaction or chain link. Okay, and which are the hackathon objectives? Uh, we partnership with Q Project in order to integrate the Boutoni voting with the QDAO structure by maintaining the security of tokens and make the Boutoni voting flow accessible to the Q community. In a more specific way, the builders have to use the SDK to create, retrieve and fetch information, create the census and integrate to the voting flow. Uh, also, next Wednesday, uh, the Q project will hold uh, their workshop. I encourage all of you to attend to get more information from them directly as well. And in the hackathon site, uh, the, the globalhackathon.com, uh, you can find our bounty and more information on, about the both projects. Also, we created a document with a bounty task uh, to fulfill that I think that will be a good starting point to start developing. Uh, you can check also the, the link in this presentation or in the Hackathon Bounty definition. It's also this link that opens a new page and you can see all the different tasks and, uh, and how a voting will look in the, in the, in the end. And without further ado, I will leave uh, you, Mark, uh, the, or SDK developer, who will give you an uh, introduction of how the SDK works and how to use it uh, in this hackathon. And thank you. I pass the word to you, Mark. Uh, you have to share the screen, I guess. At least of mine. Sure. Stop sharing. Okay. The floor is yours. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark. Uh, I am the main developer of the SDK. Um, the SDK we have in, in Bogdan is just like a easy to use gateway for the API we have. Uh, integrators can use the API we have, but uh, the SDK aims to be like the the simple way to to create elections, to create censuses, and to vote, and it's pretty easy to to understand how it works and to integrate with some uh, some UI, some some interface in a in a very simple way. Uh, today I'm gonna create a, a, a TypeScript script, um, very easy, um, just to show how to create accounts, censuses. Uh, to create an election using some sensors that we create and finally to to vote um so yeah let's begin um first of all um i have like a very simple project which is just an example i have um just two dependencies i mean everything what it's uh, needed for for creating a typescript uh, project but um also the sdk i just using the latest version and we also use the the ethers library which is very common in the web3 world 
and we are going to use this just to to use the wallet and functionality that it provides and and that's it uh, i already installed everything but it's just a yarn install and so on so yeah let's begin um i'm gonna begin declaring uh what it's the first part which will be the the client uh, the client is uh, from class of Tony SDK client and we will also have um, we will usually we, we would use here metamask or something like that but because this is a script and we are just using uh, random generated um, wallets from the ethers library so we are just using um, a new random wallet uh, for for the creator of the of the election okay so our creator is the only person which has um, permissions to begin the election to stop the election and to have uh, this ownership of the of the election so the the first um, function that i have here is just for creating the client okay um, how how we define the the, the client uh, it's pretty easy to use it has uh, I, I i don't want to enter in all details all the options that we can pass i just want to make it as simple as possible so um, the first thing we are going to pass which is the only mandatory thing is the environment we are going to use for testing purposes now the dev environment and I will just link uh, a wallet uh, to the Bogdani SDK client, and this wallet is the, the, the wallet that we just created, okay? the, the wallet of the creator. So everything that will be, you, will be done using the SDK client will be done with the wallet of the, of the creator okay? from, from here to the end. And okay, so the first thing we are going to do is in it. The SDK, which is the function that, that we need. Okay. So next step, we have to create an account because we have the wallet that we are going to use. But uh, this wallet needs to have a, a account set it up in our blockchain. Okay. Uh, this is also pretty easy to do. It's just uh, calling a function, and this function um, can do uh, does everything for you. Um, there are a lot of options here. I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into detail. This is everything explained in the developer portal and the and in the uh, GitHub repo from the SDK. Do you have examples there and so on? But this function um, can set a lot of information in your account and also gives you tokens. Uh, and in this case, are tokens from the dev environment. But uh, these tokens are needed uh, for for creating an election. Remember that we have a gasless voting solution, but this doesn't mean that uh, creating an election is free. I mean, uh, it's free to vote, but uh, some tokens are needed to, to create an election. Okay, so um, just by calling this function, you are already, uh, you have already set it, your, your account. And if you want to check if that's uh, okay, we also have a, a, another function which is fetch account info and this will give us the info we just created just to take a look at what the, the SDK has has created okay so the next step is simple as um, creating an account so we create account nice so we already have an account uh, working in the in the in our blockchain. So first step for creating new things, we are going to create a, a census. There are different types of census. We have plain census. We have weighted census. Uh, for this example, we are going to use the, the the simple one, which is the plain census. Okay. So um, before we are going to define which participants are going to vote in this election. Okay. So imagine uh, we have like uh, five people, five friends that we want uh, them to vote in our election. And I'm just going to simulate this. So we have uh, participants, which I will create five 
this will be an array of uh, wallets. I mean, let's create an array of five. And in each of them, we will have a wallet, also a random wallet, as the same way we did with the creator, because it's just for example purposes. So we are just creating uh, five imaginary people. Um, so let's define the, the census we have. We, will, we are going to create a, a plain census. This is uh, there is a type in the in the SDK which is plain census simple as that. This is uh, one person one boat, and and we also can create weighted census and so on. Again, it's everything uh, explained it in the in the developer portal and the repo. And for adding these persons to the census is just as simple as uh, calling to the add function. Okay, so. We are taking. We are going to take the participants array, and we are going to to add them by addresses. Okay. So uh, the census is just five persons that are um, that are defined by they are public addresses. Okay, and because we are going to need this uh, this participants uh, later when we want to to sorry i have i will return here the census exactly so now when we call the create census it will return a, an object from type plain census and because we are going later to vote with these participants we will need their private keys okay because these are just a, a random wallets so what i want to do right now is just for my information is just to to show these people so um, I'm going to, I just want the address of them because that's something I need. And I also want their private key, exactly. That's just for, for, for having the information that I will need to later, okay? Yeah, and that's it for creating the sensors. It's like three lines, uh, what? In fact, it's like two lines, create the plain census and adding participants to this to this census. And that's it. And we will have the, um, the census. And here uh, we will create, the, the, we will have the census here set. Uh, next function, I already have this function um, written. It's the create election, which needs a census as a parameter. So we are going to, to call this function. Um, the return of this function will be the, the, once we create the election, is the ID of the election, which is unique uh, for every new uh, election. So we will, we will have the election ID, which is the, the result from calling the create election with the census that we just created. Okay. What does this function does is um, it defines uh, an object from type uh, election, which has uh, several parameters, uh, title, description, header, the stream URI. Uh, these are, for example, optional. These are the, the title, for example, is mandatory. End date is also mandatory. When there is no start date, it means that the, that the election begins immediately. And we also define a census, which because every election needs a census in order to know who is going to vote. But there are a lot of uh, other parameters which are uh, documented in the GitHub repo and in the developer portal, which you can uh, easily check. And once we have this um, election object, we can add questions. For example, here we have this dummy question with a dummy description. And there is like the two options to vote, which is yes with the value zero and no with the value one. And once we have this object creator, we just have to uh, call the create election um, function passing this object. And this will uh, return the, the election ID. Once you have an election ID, you can be completely sure that the election has been created. And this will be um, at this point. Okay. 
So, because here we have the election ID, and um, we are going to set this uh, election ID to the client because it's uh, created just now. And at this point here, everything is created, okay? So um, I want to fetch information about what we just created. So I can also call to the fetch election um, function from the client to check what it's going on, okay? I hope I didn't make any mistake because I'm going to execute everything. So let's start and see what happens. I hope it works. Remember, it takes a little bit because uh, everything has to be confirmed, transaction by transaction, uh, even the create account, the election, and so on. Okay, we have the first results here. Um, what do we have uh, right now? We have the output of um, what we did here in the create account, which is this uh, console log. Uh, here we have the the account of the creator, which is um, just a random uh, wallet. Uh, we have a balance of 50 tokens, which is what it gives you in the beginning in the dev blockchain. And here is the URL from IPFS where there is uh, all the information of the account stored as a metadata. Okay, That's the first output we have. Then we have the second output, which is something like that I need later for voting. So I have like five participants from this from the election that I just created. I'm just going to copy this because I will need this information in order to identify myself as these participants. Okay. In the in real world, of course, you don't have the private key of the participants, but you don't need it. You just need to the addresses of the people in order to create the census. Okay. So that's are our let's say voters. And Voters, I'm just going to copy this information here for for later because we want to vote. And then the last thing we are outputting is um, the information of the election we just created. And that's it. That's a published election. We just created it with the title, the description, all the information we set. And here is a lot of other information which you can modify. Okay, I didn't want it to explain everything. It's everything explained in the developer, developer portal or in the GitHub repo. And here is the information about the census and so on. Look, there is five people like we just said with a, a weight of five because it's one person, one vote in our case. We have the results, which is zero, zero because at the moment nobody voted. And we have lots of information here which you can uh, easily check, okay? So we have uh, the, the, the election created. That's the ID. I'm also going to copy this ID because I will need it. Um, yeah, and let's forget about this. I'm just going to comment how we created an election with census and so on. And now we are going to the second part and that's imagine we are already created this election and we want people to vote, okay? So, yeah, let's going to let's go to vote. I have this function which is called vote, which needs an uh, an election ID. Okay, and um, so we will call this function which is vote vote, and we are going to pass the election ID that I just copied from here. Okay, and that will be our function to to vote. So what we need for voting, remember that um, that's like the other part that's from the participants point of view. Okay, so we are also going to need the, to, to have a client. Okay, so again, new Bogdani SDK client, and we are going to use the, the dev environment again. Now, um, we have an election ID. We can also set the election ID, which is the ID that, that we are passing to the function. And we, and as we did before, we have the, the, the wallet. Which wallet are we are going to use? I'm going to define a new wallet object. Um, I have to pass here the private key. And that's what I needed the information from before. So I'm going to use, for example, the first person in the right, and I'm going to use their private key in order to set their account. 
that's the way I can identify myself as the first voter. Okay, so the first person from the arrive voters that I just copied, and I use the private key. That's that will be my identifier from the client. And how to vote? Well, pretty easy. Few lines only. We have a, a class which is the vote class, and I'm just going to vote for the no option, which was then the option with the value one. Remember the value one was was no value zero was yes i'm just going to vote no for for this example once we have the vote um we can just um call the client function for voting which is the submit vote and we pass the vote that we created okay and that's it simple as that uh, once doing this you can already vote um i'm going to to show something here in console in order to see that we voted correctly. So I'm gonna, once we vote, uh, I want to fetch the election again, as we did before. But now I just want to see the results. So we are going to console log the, um, yes, sorry, That's something we have to wait, yeah. So uh, we are going to show the results from the election once we vote with the first participant. Okay. So now it's just voting for this election that we just created. That's the ID. And um, that's it. Let's go. Again, uh, it takes a little bit of time to confirm it, that the vote transaction and so on. And ready, that's, we already voted with the first voter. And because uh, he voted the no option, here is the value of one, because the no option has one vote. So let's run it again using the second uh, participant. The second participant is going to vote no also. And we run it again. So we will see zero and two, because two was voted two times. Let's see if it comes. Yeah, we have uh, two votes for the no option. And yeah, finally, we can also uh, vote for the yes option at least one time to see that everything works. And if it works with this, um, we have uh, finished a uh, complete flow using a simple script, using TypeScript. Let's see. Now we should see, see one and two. Okay, one person voted one, and two persons voted no, and that's the result of the of the election. Um, I don't know if uh, I could also share or explain. We have um, maybe that's interesting to see. Let me open a new window and open the. SDK repo. A new window. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing this screen. And I'm going to share another screen. I don't know if are you are you seeing the new screen, right? Yeah. The, the GitHub repo from the Bogdani SDK, you have here lots of information of what I just explained it with more detailed examples and so on. But here in the environments, you have GitHub, GitHub pages where we have a simple example to deploy it, which is uh, easier to, to, to use because it's just a UI interface. I'm going to connect my uh, MetaMask I have lots of tokens, as you can see, and I'm logged with this uh, address. Uh, this time, we are not. I'm not using random wallets. Uh, I'm using my uh, MetaMask as a creator. I can also create random wallets. So, for example, I create one, two, three, four, whatever. In the census, I am myself, okay, and random people. 
So that's exactly the same that we did in the script. So we are going to create an election as we did before with this census, me and four other random people. We create the election and see how I have to sign this transaction. This transaction is signed with uh, MetaMask, but it's just used for signing. Uh, no ethers are needed, no nothing is needed. You could simply use a, a, a newly generated MetaMask account and it would work because it's this goes directly to our chain, to the bot chain. We sign the transaction, we wait till it, com it confirms. takes a little bit yeah and the election is created we have an, ex an explorer where we can check this this new generated um, election and we can see here uh, information uh, about um, the, the election that we just uh, created we have the description the questions envelopes now there are uh, zero votes and there is only one question as we did in the example that's just for the testing purposes and that's my my the address of of the account that uh, i just created okay so i'm going to vote for example with the uh, for option i have option one on option two and here are the votes that um that the election has as we did in the script so for example i'm going to vote with a random ballot and i'm i'm going to vote for option two now i'm not singing i'm not singing anything with metamask because i'm using the um the the wallet that i use it randomly and because it's a random wallet i have the private key inside the browser so i don't need to sign anything because that's not um that's not secure i mean it's just a random wallet and we are not doing it in a secure way uh, and it worked we already we voted for option two we can vote here with the other random wallet for option two and we, we should see here zero two with two recycled votes what we get in response when voting it's the vote id which is like a uh, receipt that's at the transaction hash that you have so now we have two votes um option one was voted zero times option two was voted uh, two times now we are going to vote for option one as we did uh, before in the script example let's see if it works Three votes, one versus two votes. And now the uh, last thing I want to do is to vote uh, with my wallet, okay? So for example, I'm going to vote for option one with my wallet. Because my wallet is my wallet and it's protected by MetaMask, I have to sign it again, as I did when creating an election. And that's it for votes, uh, two versus two. And there is still one person in the census, which I'm not going to vote. That's just for uh, testing pur purposes. And that's the final result. Remember, you can you can access this uh, page. It's public. You don't need uh, no tokens, except for the Botoni tokens, which are given to you directly. But you don't need to have ethers or something like that. You can use a new wallet to, to test everything and i i hope it will be useful here uh, remember that the end is in the sdk we have the examples folder with which we have here like a create react app example and other types of uh, examples and that's it uh, i hope it was uh, an interesting <laughs> presentation and thanks everybody okay thank you Mark. Yeah, it is the problem or the blessing of having this SDK so easy that is easy to explain and to, to show. And yeah, to finish, if there's no questions, uh, I will share again my screen. Okay. 
your seeing uh, it? Yes. Uh, with the DAO Global Hackathon page. I cannot see it yet now, but uh, I guess that uh, it's working. And as I explained it before, here you can see the goal and a little bit more explanation, the, the requirements and the expected output, uh, the criteria we will use for uh, judging uh, the, the, the submission. And also, as I said before, this is the bounty task and to be fulfilled. There's a guide and how it can work and a potential voting flow that uh, the builders can use. And to finish, uh, we have uh, this uh, hack Discord hackathon channel, uh, Tony, that we can, we are there to answer questions. And, and, and if you have any doubt or issue, you can ask there. And also you can find us in the GitHub and github.com slash bookdoni and in our Twitter, in twitter.com slash bookdoni. And that's it. Uh, we hope that uh, everything is clear and you have a happy time hacking in this hackathon.